All right, we are in Damba, Zhonglu village. This is home to these beautiful three and four story stone castle houses. Every single family lives in these amazing stone houses. And this is an amazing area because number one, it's low altitude, which is very rare for the Tibetan Plateau. This is about 2,200 to 2,300 meters. Number two, what's also super interesting is this is the home to the Jia Rong Tibetan very small subgroup of the Tibetan people that only lives in this particular valley and around Markong. So if you want to see the stone architecture and you will see John Rong Tibetan cultural life, this is the place to come. Okay, behind me is corn. Okay, I know you guys don't think that's a big deal because you see corn all the time, but on the Tibetan Plateau, that is a big deal because the Tibetan Plateau has an average elevation of over 4,000 meters. That's over 14,000 feet, which means corn doesn't usually grow up there because it's so cold and it's so high. And usually there's not any trees up on the Tibetan Plateau. It's just kind of like a barren, dry, high wasteland. But this area is really, really special because as you can tell from this video, it's super green, it's super lush. It's already just the beginning of June and everything is already green here. You can see everything behind me is just this glorious, rich green color. And I live in Qinghai province and I often take trips out to 3,500 to 4,500 meters doing trekking in these barren mountains. And it's pretty exciting for me to see all this green, lush, verdant stuff. This is classic Sichuan province. So the altitude is higher and the latitude is higher in Qinghai, which kind of makes it kind of a Denver, Colorado or, or Montana of China. But this part is kind of like the mountainous south. And that means it's lush, it's green, and that corn grows here. Okay, we're standing in front of this wonderful stone house that we're sleeping in tonight. And it's right in the middle of uh, Zhonglu village, right here on the, the hillside, surrounded by fields of corn, and these amazing five, six story tall stone houses. You really don't get a feel for how big they are until you actually go inside of one of these things. And it really does feel like a castle inside each of these houses is probably four to five different stories. And then each story has probably three, four, five, or six different guest bedrooms. And so you're looking at 30 bedrooms per one of these houses. And that includes a kitchen, a courtyard, a garden, several different courtyards on the higher levels where you can actually sit outside on a patio. So this is just a huge space. I mean, this compares to probably a kind of a boutique style hotel in Bangkok, Thailand, or anywhere in the world that's maybe six or seven stories as far as the just the size of this thing of what's going on inside of these castles. Okay, we're in the courtyard of this particular guest house. Most of these stone houses in Damba have been converted into some type of hotel or guest house. So most of the industry here is 
hospitality or tourism, which you can imagine would be true because people just want to drive here from Chengdu and see the amazing stone houses and the stone towers of Damba area. All right, guys, my room is on the fourth floor and we are looking out over Zhonglu village in Damba. This is amazing. It just doesn't get any better than this. We're just on the top of the mountains, surrounded by these beautiful stone houses. And it's unbelievable that I'm actually standing on the fourth floor and that all these houses are four to five floors. Okay, just to give you a feel of the size of how big this castle I'm staying in is, we're gonna do a little quick tour just to give you a feel of how big this thing is. You can see behind me this gnarly slope. What is amazing is that they build these white stone houses on these cliff faces, on a practically vertical cliff, and then they terrace it out. And then they grow corn and numbing peppers and other vegetables on these terraces. But they live in this amazingly vertical landscape, and somehow they've learned to survive and build these amazing stone houses in the mountainside. Okay, we found it. This is the magical huajiao plant, or what we would call in English, numbing peppercorns. This is something we don't really have very much in America, and I've really only seen it in China. In fact, it's very much a Sichuan food specialty. If you get Sichuan food, you're probably gonna get really hot peppers in it, and you're gonna get these numbing peppercorns. They're not spicy per se, but they almost kind of have like a soapy, numbing kind of feeling. These uh, particular ones aren't ready yet. They're not ready for picking yet, but I'm going to try one anyway and uh, just to see what it's like. Okay, this is kind of what they look like up close. I'm going to try one of these puppies. Oh, mmm. Oh. Oh, that was super, super sour. It was like eating a rotten lemon peel or something. Oh, man. Oh, that's really sour. Oh, and actually... Ah, I can't put my tongue. It's really easy of me. <sighs> okay, wow, it's 10 minutes later, and I can feel my tongue, but it definitely feels like it has this crazy fizzing sensation, like I just ate a whole pack of Pop Rocks at one time, and that's how my tongue feels. It's like all this little crispy uh, crackling in my tongue. It's pretty crazy. So that was just one of those Sichuan peppercorns. Imagine if you put 50 or 100 of those things in your soup, like most locals do. You can imagine it packs quite a bit of punch into your mouth. Of course, they're a little bit more woody and fried when they put them in there. So the flavors aren't quite as strong as what I just experienced from that raw one. But woo baby, those things pack a little punch.
Okay, we're inside this amazing monastery that I think very few uh, tourists, at least Western tourists, get to. It's called Bugolong Monastery. This is actually a bone monastery, which is the native shamanistic religion that predates Tibetan Buddhism in Tibet. So this monastery is actually very old. Um, this is over 700 year old monastery. The actual structure you're seeing is probably built in the 70s or 80s but uh, the monastery itself and the ground of the monastery is over 700 years old. This is really special. I just got to go inside the temple and a special fact about bone monasteries is that you actually walk counterclockwise rather than clockwise as you would in Tibetan Buddhism through the Tibetan Buddhist prostrations and circumambulation. So bones walk counterclockwise and Buddhists walk clockwise. So they have uh, similarities as far as what the temples look like, but uh, differences as far as practice. What I love particularly about this monastery, as I'm walking through here, is that there's grass everywhere. It just feels really natural. Most monasteries are kind of concrete and paved. This just feels a little bit more, more natural. Okay, we're in Sopo village, home to some of the oldest watchtowers 
in Dampa. Here's a great example of the old versus the new. This is the old one. And then this is the new one. This is a little bit more concrete style. Still with Buddhist elements, but uh, the old one is definitely the more traditional form of architecture. This cow is waiting to get back in its home. It has made the trek from the mountains back home and it is ready, but the owners are not letting it in. Oh, this is definitely a highlight for me. Look at these amazing watchtowers. So great. And there's three of them right here. Amazing. They're so great. This one that's closest to me, the, uh, the taller of the two, is definitely leaning a little bit. It looks like it's about to fall over like the leaning tower of pizza. What really surprised me about some of these towers is the geometry of the structure. I thought it would just be kind of be like a cubic, four-sided, kind of deal kind of thing that kind of you know went all the way up but actually some of these towers have an octagon or even a pentagon kind of effect that's not just a simple four-sided cube or square on all four sides so i guess the uh, extra sides gives it a little bit more strength you also have additional kind of fins that kind of pull out at the bottom to give the base structure a little bit more support these things are super high and super old and I can't imagine building this three or four hundred years ago using only hands and rocks. That's pretty amazing.